Dead Space is a survival horror video game originally released in 2008 with an innovative approach to the genre, spawning a number of highly rated sequels. No, 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 not, not, not you. And even more recently, a remake for the original game. In this game, you play as Isaac Clarke, the unlucky engineer stuck on the USG Ishimura, which has since been overrun with what are essentially space zombies. And the problem being, we are armed with nothing but a futuristic toolbox and a can-do attitude. I've never played any Dead Space game before, so in today's video, it only feels right to attempt the Dead Space's remake's hardest achievement, completing the game on impossible mode. Where even the necromorphs are thinking, Uh, guys, maybe we took it too far this time. Let's get into it. The game starts off with Stevie Wonder parking us in the main hangar of the USG Ishimura. And I, I say parking and not crashing, because come on, it's not like he would be able to tell the difference anyway. We make our way to the flight lounge, where our introduction to the game is watching a dear colleague being turned into Julius Caesar in 44 BC. Oh my Christ! Chen has just been absolute. As any normal person would, we get ourselves the hell out of there and make a way to pick up the best weapon in the game, the plasma cutter. Second only to. <laughs> Sorry, I've written the finger blaster in my script, but that, that's definitely not the name of the weapon. It's second only to the hand cannon. You, you don't want to finger blast a necromorph, that'll get you in more trouble than you're already in. The plasma cutter will be our main weapon of choice for the majority of the game cutting off limbs and shooting off heads as necessary. With our weapon collected, we receive our first video call from our colleagues, who have decided on the most important thing to do, now that our ship is going downhill faster than a wheelchair without brakes. I like trains. We pick up our stasis and head to the tram repair room, where we not only encounter the first real interaction with necromorphs, but we also discover that Isaac has the damage output and combat skills of Christian Bale. And not this Christian Bale. This Christian Bale. Fortunately, the game shows pity on us here and provides us with an unlimited stasis refill, which I am certain saved me from the first death of the game. <gasps> there's one on the floor, there's one on the floor, there's one on the floor. Oh my god, there's one behind me. With the damaged tram replaced, we now need to head off for a replacement data board. Now check. I have watched a little tidbit and it says, if the downed enemies are dummy thick, they're real. And he was dummy thick. You know what, Snamwages, thank you very much. As the Lord once said, if the booty be dummy thick, he will try and beat that dick. Oh! My bad shirt, I forgot to check if he was dummy thick. We pick up the data board and come across the first upgrade bench of the run. Now, instead of updating you every time we use an upgrade, I'll give you a heads up. We will be upgrading health and damage as a priority, and everything else will be upgraded when I do not have a choice. Data board reinstalled. With the trams fixed and our lust for trains satiated, we make our way back to the ship. Once we do get back to the ship, we have the pleasure of watching Johnson blow the f up. We never reference this again. We're now into chapter 2, where we need to make our way to the morgue in the medical bay to collect the captain's rig, which will allow us more access to the ship. On the way there, we discover our lack of stasis. You know what I could do with chat? Stasis. Give me a goddamn upgrade, please. Give me stasis. Give me stasis. Give me give me give me stasis. 
Oh, mate, give me stasis. I don't think he's going to give me stasis, chat. And we also pick up the Kinesis module, which gives us the ability to pick things up and throw them at incoming enemies. Once we make it to medical, we discover a barricade has been made, blocking our access to the morgue, and we have to go and collect the parts to blow this barricade to hell. The first part was nice and easy to grab, and we make our way to the second part. Right. Hurry, you don't think I'm trying, buddy? Bad luck next time, buddy! Remember that Spongebob movie? After Spongebob doesn't win the uh, managerial position. Once we stop being a goofy goober, we get to the main lab, where things are anything but nautical nonsense. That guy's still alive. Do I only have eight bullets? He is missing... Oh, he's not, he's not missing a leg just yet. Okay, that's fine. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. Oh, I'm out of ammo, chat. You know what? I, I'm happy to play a game of Ring Around the Rosies right here. I don't mind. But... Let's go, chat. Right button that time. Oh my god! Hello! Oh, hey, 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 hey. Having left a streak in two pairs of underwear, we got through the barricade in one piece and go to meet the captain in the morgue. However, once we make it to the captain, he becomes a bit too frisky for my liking. Please get off of me, right now, thank you. Yeah, um, I. Right, where is he? Off. 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 Whew. With the captain deceased once again, we make our way to engineering, which brings us to the end of chapter 2 and to the start of chapter 3. Chapter 3, in my opinion, is one of the hardest chapters in the game, because it's early enough that you have very limited access to upgrades, but just late enough in for the developers to throw dying people at you like you're a teenager on Epstein's Island. Okay, right. Open. Stasis again. Move, 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 move. No, okay, right, bomb. Heal. Right now. Yeah, I'm dead, chat. Yeah, there we go, chat. Oh! Right, here we go, chat. Back in. Two hours later. With a lot less confidence and a lot more strategy, we make it past the onslaught of enemies at the end of the gondola and refuel the engines without too much trouble. Now on to the other concerning part of Chapter 3, the centrifuge. The concerning thing being the amount of time it took me to figure out what on earth I was meant to do. Yeah, okay, it is freeze. Right, okay, we're, we're, we're just... Yeah. I don't think I can float anymore because the centrifuge is activated. I think... Looks like the centrifuge is back online. All that's left is... <gasps> ah! I pressed the wrong button. Three hours later. Yes, dying to what is basically a massive bay blade was not my brightest moment, but do you know what's just as quick and physically painless as being hit by a centrifuge? And I say physically painless because I'm now emotionally dead inside. That's right, you beautiful people. Liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Hit that button, hit the little bell next to it, and stay up to date with my future uploads. The final part of Chapter 3 is to manually ignite the ship's engines, which, although sounds like a daunting task, was surprisingly easy. We just kept our distance and shot at the enemies from afar until we managed to ignite the engines, which brings an end to Chapter 3.
To start chapter 4, we meet Hammond on the bridge and proceed to wait for what feels like 20 minutes whilst we have a load of useless dialogue. This chapter is all about us getting pounded by bo <coughs> asteroids, by asteroids, and we need to stop that. What the flipping hell is that? Stay right there. Let's go! Woo! Fortunately, after this first encounter with the brute, this is, without a doubt, the easiest chapter in the game, and you should have no troubles whatsoever. Which is what I would say if I wasn't a complete idiot. I didn't know what I was doing there, so the next one we're going to be a bit quicker. Stand by. What do you mean, stand by? I can't go back inside. Are you having me on? Surely there's a... O2. <gasps> O2! Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme. Whew! <gasps> We're fine. Everything is fine. Oh, chat. That was stress inducing. Okay. Before we make our way back to medical for chapter five, I make an absolutely awful decision. My my main weapon, my, what is it? Plasma car, isn't quite doing it for the small enemies. And instead, I, th I think we need the flamethrower. What have you got there? Flamethrower? That's cool. Not going to use it. 20 minutes later, we have our flamethrower and have made our way to the medical deck, where we're introduced to Dr. Mercer and his little pet project, the Hunter. Um, please don't leave me with that thing, sir. Come back. Sir. Doctor. This is... You are not a good medical professional if you leave me with this thing. Oh my Christ almighty. Right, move, 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 move. Right, let's... <gasps> Get off me! Get off me! <sighs> oh my Christ almighty! Uh, oh my Christ, leave me alone. I don't want to be brutally murdered. I am... Just... Distraught. I'm scared. Terrified. So, it's safe to say that being hunted was possibly my least favourite part of the game and severely stressed me out. Fortunately, everything is easier with a friend, so it really helped me out having Survivor there with me. Oh, hey buddy. Yeah, turns out Survivor must be a nickname and not his real name, because he is in fact dead. Fortunately, he did give us a little heads up that Mercer is going to gas the ship. Yeah, but you can't go out there because the, the, the air is poisonous for you. You will die if you, you'll die instantly. Once we'd stopped the immediate gassing problem, we make our way over to hydroponics to start chapter six and are introduced to Elizabeth Cross. <gasps> no need for that. They just needed fertilizer chat, so they decided to make me shit myself live on stream. Which is very considerate of them. Who's this? Oh, it's Cross. Who the hell's Cross? Elizabeth lets us know that all her friends are insects and need to be eliminated before we can take out the Leviathan. So we run, rave and run around the ship, stabbing her work colleagues in the head where they seem to get off on the pain. Eventually, we take out the final teenage dirtbag, so we get up and leave back towards hydroponics. Thank you, thank you. Oh, please, no, 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 thank you. You rock, sir, thank you very much. Once back at hydroponics, it turns out the plan to weaken the Leviathan, so we could eject it into space, was literally a waste of time and did nothing, so we have to fight it anyway. Is he down? Oh, that is him. Okay, right. Uh, oh my god. What's going on? Am I dead? <gasps> With chapter 6 out of the way, we're officially halfway through the game. Chapter 7 takes us into the mining deck, and let me tell you, I do not yearn for the mines. 
The idea of being stuck in a lift with copious amounts of enemies. Laser beams capable of cutting your limbs off. And fire traps strong enough to make you look like this guy. We're not quite doing it for me. Fortunately, we managed to dodge that burning impression and make our way to the processing control room. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and say the processing beam is a big old death. And boy, I do not know if I was right because I absolutely clutched up in this room. Coming into this room blind, I had no idea how many enemies were going to ambush me in here. But with immense skill and an inventory full of heals, we managed to get out of there alive. Chapter 7 also provides us with the joy of planting the SOS beacon, and at this part in the chapter, I felt like I was the beacon, because I was planted in the middle of nowhere with no idea what on earth to do. So, with our lack of confidence and no skill whatsoever, we slowly float our way through this part of the game, and finally plant and launch the SOS beacon, which brings an end to the chapter. Chapter 8 requires us to go to communications and fix the comms array, but getting there isn't quite as easy as it seems. What do you mean? Once we manage to actually get to comms, we come across my biggest weakness yet. Puzzles. Go in there. Ah! I'm a genius, chat. With the comms array finally fixed, we receive a message from the nearby ship, the USM Valor. We picked up your escape pod number 47 and are en route to your position. That was the worst f***ing idea you've ever had. Where's that gonna land? It's gonna break, he's gonna get out, he's gonna murder people. Why on earth would you do that? Oh, Chet, oh, I think they opened the escape pod. Oh. Unfortunately, we're unable to send a message back to the USM Valor as there's something blocking the antenna. Blast doors Blast doors what by? I'm back, baby. The Leviathan. I killed that thing. That's right, everyone. The Leviathan is back. And this time, he's pissed. With the Remnant Leviathan down, that brings a close to Chapter 8. Chapter 9 is fully based upon the USM Valor, which has since crashed into us. Our plan on the USM Valor is to salvage a part of the ship known as the Singularity Core, which we can use to power a shuttle to get us home. Unfortunately, we have 99 problems and not one of them is covered in Ice-T's 1993 hit, so I guess we're going to have to go this alone. We're first introduced to a new enemy on the Valor, whose stasis pack has merged into their skin. Now, personally, I would think that would slow them down, but nope, apparently not. What the f... I missed. What the hell? was that. The second problem being a nuke. In this section, you have to enter the torpedo bay and dispose of a bomb. The issue being that if this bomb gets a whiff of even a rogue fart, it blows up. And with it, your six hours of progress. <gasps> okay, right, 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 right. I'm physically sick. I thought that thing was going to blow the f hell up then. Right, you. Hello. Ooh. 
safe to say we were not hanging around in that room. We finally make our way to Hammond to collect the Singularity Core. Oh, Hammond, yeah. Oh, my Christ. He's made him into a shish kebab. Oh, the, no, we need that, Hammond. We, we sort of... Okay, right, that's fine. We guess we don't need it anymore. It turns out Hammond blowing up the ship means we have to get out of there. Now, my logical brain goes, well, it's going to blow. Got to run. As far as I'm aware, there is not a time limit for this, and you can safely and slowly take out the enemies, which I would highly recommend. Let me in. Let me in. Oh, my God. Piss off. We make it back to the Ishimura, which brings an end to Chapter 9. Oh, hello. It's just a, some f baby. I need to call, like, child services or something. You shouldn't be left here on your own. Chapter 10 requires us to make our way to the Executive Shuttle. But is life ever that easy? We first come across this satanic ritual site, Rock and roll, buckaroo. grab the crew deck keycard, and then decide to play some zero-g basketball to settle our nerves. That was the move that made LeBron cry. It turns out, settling my nerves was necessary because not long after, we were reintroduced to Dr. Mercer. <laughs> and of course, the hunter. Didn't I kill this guy? Oh, you're having me on. We use the usual cut off the limbs and stasis plan for the hunter and manage to escape unharmed. The rest of the chapter is honestly pretty easy. We made our way around the ship to destroy tendrils in different quarters. We meet Dr. Kine, who says we need to return the marker to a nearby planet full of necromorphs, and we head to the executive shuttle. Excuse me, hello. Oh, is that the hunter? And what's he hit me with? He's... Oh, hello. Right. Nope. Heal. Heal. Let's go! Ooh. Excuse me. Oh my god, no, no, no. I've come so far. Leave me alone. Let's go! With the hunter dead and us safe and sound with both feet on the ground, we're on to chapter 11. This chapter includes one of the biggest difficulty spikes in the game, when you have to transfer the marker to the hangar bay. In this area, you'll experience narrow pathways and a large number of enemies that can hit you harder than the crushing realisation that you'll never be loved. The biggest issue for me, however, is my game crashing. I think my game's crashed. Oh! Eventually, we make it back to the marker. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my Christ! Oh. Okay. With the marker now moved to the main hangar, we make our way to the shuttle. Excuse me. What? Right, I I need her to give me a phone call and tell me what on earth's going on here. Sorry, Isaac. I couldn't trust him with the marker. Even guys didn't pick up on that. They found the first marker in some crater on Earth. You'll find another way off the Ishimura. Oh, thanks. I mean, you're one hell of an engineer. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll get off the Ishimura. You're a great engineer. Not to mention that everyone on this ship is turning into a zombie. Yeah, don't worry about that. You'll be fine. You're a great engineer. That's all that matters. Right. I get that Daniel's like, oh, he can't be trusted with the marker. At this point, you have the marker. You are on the ship. You didn't need to kill him. You could just fly off. Like... If you're gonna leave me behind, at least leave me behind with a doctor that knows what he's on about, rather than just kill him and leave me for dead. We recall the shuttle and head to Aegis 7, which brings us to the 12th and final chapter. Complete chapter 11 on any difficulty. Here we are, chat, the final chapter. It's starting to get a bit shaky, you know what I mean? I'm a little bit weak. This chapter requires you to use all of the skills you have learned throughout the game as you'll be reintroduced to some of the toughest enemies and challenges which you have faced thus far.
not seven hours 42 minutes into a playthrough for it to do this six and a half hours later oh chap i am absolutely terrified To be honest, Cam, it's relatable. I'd do the same. <laughs> love, we love that simp activity. <laughs> it's at this part of the final chapter that we discover Isaac has been hallucinating his girlfriend, Nicole, for the whole period, and it was instead Elizabeth Cross, the scientist from hydroponics. Nicole is, in fact, deceased. Okay, kill her then, yeah. I have no emotional connection to this lady whatsoever. Murderer. Oh, I can't see the... Oh, she's... Yeah, okay, she killed her. With that out of the way... We head into the final boss battle. One, come on, one more. Go on. Let's go, come on. One, two, three. Oh my god, I clutched. Just like that, we had completed Dead Space's impossible difficulty. Untouchable. <gasps> Let's go! Come on! Although this was definitely a hell of a challenge, I had an absolute blast being introduced to the Dead Space series, and this game in particular may have earned itself a spot on the list of my favourite games. Speaking of my favourite games, be sure to check out my Dead Rising video here easily one of the best game franchises I have ever played. Finally, all of my challenges are streamed live on Twitch, so be sure to come along and check them out. Remember to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching.